Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything and today I'm going to be talking about five tips that I can give you about making videos of making stuff in the workshop. Check it out. Alright, a little background before we get started. Um, I've been making YouTube videos here for two years and I've learned a lot along the way about camera gear and sort of best practices that work for me in the shop. Now, um, I try to mentor as many kind of new creators as I can and I'm always open to answering questions from people that want to start their own channel. And over that amount of, you know, sort of guidance that I've given over the last couple of years, I've learned kind of what works for new people and what doesn't based on what's worked for me over the last two years here on YouTube. Now, just a little bit of context. I've been making videos for a really long time outside of YouTube uh, for about 15 years since I was in like middle school and high school uh, on mini DV tapes and I learned how to edit on Final Cut and Premiere Pro. So the video process was not new to me when I started here on YouTube. I had a lot of the gear already, um, but definitely a different sort of dynamic once you move into a shop environment and you're trying to film projects, especially by yourself with like a tripod and a camera the way it's set up now. So uh, we'll jump right into it and we'll start with uh, these couple of little tips that will hopefully help you succeed at your channel by making life a little easier to make videos. Let's get started. All right, my first tip, the most important tip of this whole video is that your camera type does not matter. You do not need an expensive rig with all these different accessories in order to make great content here on YouTube, especially in a shop environment. Um, I talk to a lot of people that feel like they can't get started on their channel because they don't have a digital SLR like I shoot on or you know a gimbal or anything like that. There are a lot of people that have done really well just filming with their phones. If you want a perfect example, go watch Chris Cash at Mount Phillip Metalworks video. I'll put a link down in the description. He's got like two million views on a video that him and his friend filmed with their phone and edited in iMovie. So there is no uh, equation that means, you know, good camera equals good content equals success on YouTube. Um, I film with a Canon 70D. It's what I've shot all my videos on. It does not shoot in 4K. I shoot in regular HD. But on top of that, I have a couple of other cameras that I sort of sub in and little accessories uh, that do make things a little bit easier. My advice for someone that wants to start a channel is I recommend the DJI Osmo Pocket. The DJI Osmo Pocket is this little tiny self-contained camera gimbal thing. Um, it's amazing. It shoots in 4K. It shoots in slow-mo. It's always stable. The audio is not terrible. They make a bunch of accessories for it. Now, this video isn't sponsored by DJI or anything like that, but I've just happened to really enjoy using this thing, and uh, it is comparable to the digital SLR that I'm filming this on right now, and I can tell that because there are videos that I have swapped this in, and no one has seemed to notice that the footage did not come off the DSLR and came off this little $300 camera. Now the DSLR that I shoot on was expensive. Um, it's, I think the body's like close to a thousand bucks and the lenses that I have are a couple hundred dollars. Um, none of that stuff really matters. If you wanna get started, don't let having this whole crazy expensive camera rig that you've seen your favorite YouTube person use stop you. Just use what's in your pocket, your phone. You can get one of these for a couple hundred bucks, buy a GoPro. Um, but you know, once you step up into the kind of prosumer camera range. My suggestion is to get a wide angle lens. I shoot a lot of the videos that you've seen on my channel with uh, a Tamron wide angle lens and I'll put links to all this stuff down the in the description of this video. And I've just found it helps widen up the shots. A lot of people have small shops shooting in their garages and it's really hard to see everything that's going on. So having a wide angle lens can be really helpful. The other wide angle that I shoot on is a Canon kit lens that's like under 200 bucks and is really great. So kind of a long roundabout way to say that don't let your camera setup stop you from making content here on YouTube. All right, tip number two, get a lot of batteries. Um, one of the most frustrating things when you're trying to shoot a project in a shop is not only are you trying to build this thing or you know figure out a problem, but when your camera that you're trying to shoot it on is constantly dying, it makes you just want to kick this thing out the door. So. I recommend going online and getting a bunch of batteries. I have, I think, 10 batteries for my camera. Batteries have become very, very cheap. 
You can get them for any camera. Um, they don't need to be factory, you know, Canon or Nikon batteries. Uh, I just buy the sort of knockoff ones off of Amazon and I made sure that I have a double bay charger like you see here. And so there's always one or two batteries that are being charged at any given time. The worst thing is when you're in the middle of a process and you hear your camera die and you don't have a battery for it. So if you're gonna spend the time to make videos, spend a little bit of money and get a couple of batteries, at least three, um, so that you always have something in rotation and you never have to have that like, oh crap moment where you have to stop doing what you're doing and wait for your batteries to charge. That goes for not only DSLRs, but you can also, if you're filming with your phone or with something like the DJI cam or even a GoPro, you can usually use one of those backup battery packs that you would charge a phone with to just have a little bit of extra runtime so you're not waiting uh, for your device to charge while you're also trying to do a project. All right, tip number three, memory cards. Get a bunch of them and do not skimp on quality. I only use SanDisk Ultra Class 10 memory cards. Now, um, there is something to be said about the way that memory cards have kind of gone and what is popular and what is not. Now, I know a lot of creators that love the idea of using a 256 gig memory card. They get one, they don't have to keep track of more than one memory card. Now, I personally recommend using 64 gig cards if you're shooting in HD, and there's a reason there. Uh, I have a friend named Sam. She has a great Instagram and YouTube channel, uh, DIY Huntress. Now, about a year ago, if I remember correctly, she lost a major project because a memory card failed, and a lot of the footage was on that card. I try to mitigate the risk of that by using many smaller cards. With a 64 gig card, you are a little limited to how much you can record, but these are $11 each. I also like to keep them in a little case like this that says full on one side and empty on the other. So as I fill up cards, I'm putting them in the full side and then on the other side I have empty cards. There's nothing more frustrating than going through all your memory cards and sticking them in the camera and finding out that most of them are full or have two or three minutes left to record on them. So for me, memory cards, lots of memory cards. I have six 64 gig, gig memory cards and that's more than enough to film a couple of projects. The other thing about memory cards, uh, I never delete any footage off the memory card until my project is published here on YouTube. That's right, so if I film something in December and I don't publish it until June, I try to keep the footage on the memory card and on the hard drive on my computer until the video is published. That's just in case the hard drive on my computer fails or the memory card itself fails, I always have a backup. Um, so for 11 bucks, you can get a 64 gig card, which is so cheap that there's no reason not to have a couple of them. All right, tip number four, audio. Good audio is so important if you're gonna make YouTube videos. Um, and a lot of people have asked me about the audio in my videos uh, in particular. Now, I don't use a lav mic. I use uh, a shotgun mic and it's on top of the camera. And after looking and buying a bunch of cheap mics off of Amazon and eBay, I finally bit the bullet and I bought a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. And there's a very specific reason that I got that microphone. Now, aside from the audio quality being fantastic, and Rode is a very popular uh, microphone company in the film industry, so you may recognize the name, but the VideoMic Pro Plus has a sensor in the cable that tells the microphone when the camera is on or off. And it will actually respond when the camera goes into like sleep mode. So if you've ever tried to film with a microphone, you know how annoying it is when you either forget to turn it on or you leave it on and the batteries in the microphone die and then you film a whole segment and there's no audio. With the VideoMic Pro Plus, I don't ever have to worry about that because the microphone's gonna turn on and off with the camera. So I've had that microphone for almost exactly one year in that one year, I've only fully charged it three times because the automatic sensing on and off means that the microphone is never left on for excessive periods of time, and that makes it super, super efficient on the battery life. Um, it has a built-in battery. It's really, really great. It is a little pricey. It's like 300 bucks, maybe 350 bucks, but if you're gonna make videos and you're looking for a very simple one-stop shop audio solution, I recommend that. Um, I'm not gonna talk about setting that microphone up because I'm really terrible when it comes to audio setup and editing, uh, but there are a bunch of really great videos on setting that up and a lot of the more inexpensive microphones as well. 
Um, so even if you don't go with an expensive mic like this, I still recommend getting one even for a GoPro or that little Osmo camera or even for your iPhone if that's what you're gonna film with. Um, and make sure you learn how to use the microphone before you just start sticking it in your footage because it's really easy to make your audio worse with a mic um, unless you go with something that's really auto tuning. So I think audio is really important even if you're only gonna talk once in one video. You know, nobody likes to listen to choppy audio uh, or shallow audio even if they're just watching someone make something. So good audio is key, that's point number four. All right, the fifth and final tip is tripods and holding your camera. Um, there's a ton of options, literally thousands of ways to hold a camera, any type, whether it be a phone, uh, the Osmo thing, or a digital SLR. But my personal favorite is this Manfrotto action tripod. It's under a hundred bucks. It's super lightweight. It goes up nice and high right now. My camera's pretty much at eye level with me, which is nice in a slim tripod. Um, it's not a lot of money, so if it ever does get knocked over or broken, I'm not out hundreds of dollars. I do have a couple of professional video tripods, but I never really use them just because they're so cumbersome. I want to be able to make videos while I'm making stuff, but never really have the videos slow me down. That's the big thing, and that's what I found is the holdup for a lot of people that want to get into sharing their knowledge here on YouTube in the maker space. Um, it's hard to add to the already daunting task of building something um, with you know setting up cameras and moving stuff around and getting the tripod right and level. So I have found that having the quickest, easiest setup with a tripod like this has not added too much time to my projects and has made things super easy. So check out this Manfrotto tripod. So what I like about this is with this little handle, I can loosen this and I can move the camera all around. Um, so I can very quickly and easily just set it up and then lock it in place and then I'm good to go. It goes up pretty tall and like I said, it's nice and cheap. By flipping this little lever, the camera is released and it does have a little quick mount that goes right in and then you can lock the camera back in place, let me tell you. It's easier to do it with two hands, but it's possible with one. All right, that about does it for this little video. Uh, I know this is not traditional for my channel. I don't really talk about technology. I mainly just try to make stuff. Um, but I get a lot of questions about making videos. Um, and it's something, like I said, that I've been doing for a long time. So when I started my YouTube channel, it wasn't a huge step for me to go from you know doing editing and production work into this sort of world uh, with my camera gear, but it's way easier than it looks to just start making videos. So many people that I know that are so, so talented and so great at teaching and educating on a one-to-one -one basis, um, you know, they wanna make YouTube channels and I try to encourage people as much as I can because I've found there's so much good in this community and there are so many people out there with knowledge that wanna share it. Now, um, just try not to let the task of getting into it stop you from doing it. Uh, I have a friend, Luke Smith, he just started his channel and the reason that I'm making this video is because he came by my shop and asked me for some advice and I said, you know, I've been meaning to make a video and after talking to him I realized that maybe it was a pressing time to do it. Um, you've got Black Friday sales coming up, you've got the holiday season coming up, so uh, I feel like there's a good time to get some great deals on some of this technology, camera gear and whatnot. So uh, why not go out, get yourself a camera, start filming yourself in the shop and be a part of this great maker community because uh, it's been really, really great to me and my friends and you know, we, uh, we really love it here. So I'm happy to be here educating. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'm gonna leave links to a bunch of the stuff that I use every day in the description. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and way more videos making stuff in the shop. We've been incredibly busy, um, but a lot of the stuff I've been doing has not really been kind of video material. So if you've been following me on Instagram, at Make Everything Shop, you see what I do day to day. And uh, I have a lot of really great projects coming to the YouTube soon, so stay tuned for those. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I am Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.